So we talked about nonfiction stories and how they have what's called text structures in the past. Um, so that's like compare and contrast, description, sequence of events, things like that. Um, certain books, like our science books or our social studies books or math books have it too. Anything that's nonfiction, so something that's real, will have something called text features to them as well. And that's what we're going to start talking about is text features. So you have your yellow packet, you will need that. So make sure you have a pencil in your yellow packet right now. And we'll start with part of the nonfiction text features and then we'll pick up with the nonfiction text features when we continue learning. So grab your yellow packets, turn to the first page and your very first thing on the top, it will have a picture of a frog and it says a book about frogs and it says title page above it. That's where you need to be. So text features help readers comprehend or understand what they're reading and they're super, super helpful when you are reading a nonfiction text. So something that's telling you real things like proof, real, not fake. So text features include all of the parts of a story or an article that are not in your main body of text. So when you open up like a social studies book or a science, especially our science books, you've got your main information and that's like the story they're telling you. But then there's little bits and pieces that are off to the side. Those are nonfiction text features. Those little pieces off to the side. So like your charts and graphs or your table of contents, or your glossary or things like that. That's what we're gonna start talking about. So we're gonna look at some examples of text features. And we're gonna start with the text features that are complete pages. So they're your entire page. So the whole thing. <clears throat> and your very first one is a title page. In a lot of our chapter books, we have title pages. So we have, this is Melody. Okay, this is the cover. And then when you open up, that first page, where it's a full page, it says the title again. And if you turn again, there's another title page. You've got the title of the book, you've got the author, and you've got some very, very important information there that authors have to include in their books. So you know where it comes from. So this is the title page that we're gonna talk about. Um, so it's going to be you open up the cover of your book and this is the page you see. So this is important. The title page is located at the beginning of the book. So like I said, when I just showed you the melody book, it was at the beginning. I turned the cover and there was my cover page. It's always going to be at the beginning of your book. It is going to tell you the basic information um, about the creation of the book. So who created the book, where it was created, all of that important information that readers should like, should reader, that readers should know about. So what information can be found on a title page? This is question number one. Look at your yellow packet. What information can be found on that title page? Look at this, what information are you seeing on here? Think about it for a minute. All right, I'm gonna tell you what information you can find on that page. You are going to find the title of the book right there. You are going to find the author of the book right there. You're gonna find who the illustrator is. What's an illustrator? An illustrator is the person who does the pictures in the book. So that is our illustrator of our book. Um, you're gonna find the publisher. So the publisher is a book, publisher of a book is the person who makes the book. They're the ones that print the book. They make sure there's no spelling errors. They make sure everything makes sense. They're like the final stop of making sure that this book is okay to go out to people like you. You're also going to find the year that it was published. So this particular book, we've got our title, which is a book about frogs. We have our author, which is Melody Amphibian. 
we have our illustrator, which is Philip Tadpole. And our publisher is the Children's Science Publications. In what year? The year 2012. And you can see that on your packet as well. So you should be filling this in in your packet. If you need to pause the video right now so you can see a little better your answers, go ahead and pause the video. But I'm going to keep moving. So what year was this book published? Take a look at your cover. Hint, hint, right there. What company published this book? Make sure you write those answers down. The next thing we're gonna talk about is a table of contents. So we use a table of contents, like our, some chapter books will tell you how many chapters are in your book, what the title of those chapters are. Um, our science books, if you take a look in the front of your science book, you'll be able to see the different units that you're learning about in that science book. That's what a table of contents does. So the table of contents is also at the beginning of the book. It's not going to be in the back. It's not going to be in the middle. It's going to be at the beginning. So that's where you're going to find the list of all the chapters that are found inside your book. So what information can be found in the table of contents? Again, this is on your packet, so make sure you're answering these. What information are we going to see? Look at this. What do we see? Well, we see the title of our book again. We can see how many chapters there are. We can see the titles of the chapters. And we can see what, what page those chapters start on. So there's tons of information that a table of contents also gives you. So the name of each chapter. And the page number where each chapter begins. Those are two very important pieces of information for a table of contents. Again, if you need me, <coughs> if you need to pause the video so you can write those answers down, go ahead and hit pause and then push play when you're ready. What chapter would you find what a frog eats? Which one of these is going to tell you what a frog eats? Is it going to be the origins? So where are frogs kind of get their start from, their habitat, where they live, their diet, or their life cycle, so the whole frog life cycle. What chapter is going to tell you what a frog eats? Uh, what page would you turn to to begin reading about the life cycle of a frog? So this is where we look at our pages. So we got to find the life cycle and find the page it starts on. What would you be reading about if you were on page nine? <clears throat> so we have a little bit of a problem now. We look at our pages. We have three, seven, 10, 12. None of those are nine. But if I know that diet starts on page 10, that must mean page nine comes before page 10. So what's the chapter before this one? Their habitat. So on page nine, you would be learning about the frog's habitat. So that, like I just said, that question's a little bit tricky uh, because page nine isn't listed in here. You're not gonna see a nine in here. So we know that the page number shows where each chapter begins. So we know that the pages must also belong to that chapter. So like I just said, we know that uh, chapter three diet starts on page 10. Well, nine comes before 10. So what chapter comes before this one? Again, it's habitat. So what page would or what would be re, what would we be reading about if we were on page nine? Write it down. All 
Our next section we're going to talk about is index. An index is also very important. I use an index when I was doing my firefighter training and my ambulance training. There's certain pieces of information that an index can give you and that's what we're going to learn about. We're going to learn about that information that an index can give you. So the index is actually at the back of the book. You're not going to find it in a chapter book unless it's non-fiction. So like Melody does not have an index because that's fiction. But your science books and your math books and all of that, there's an index in there. <laughs> so your index is at the back of the book, at the end of your book. That's going to help you as the reader quickly find a topic that you want to know about. So if I wanted to read about skin, I would flip to the index. Skin starts with S, so I look under S, find skin, I'd go over and I know that on pages 14, 21, and 35, I can learn about the skin of a frog. So what information can be found in the index? Important concepts or ideas that are related to your topic the book is about. And they're going to be listed in ABC order, in alphabetical order. That helps keep things very organized. So like I just said, if I want to learn about the skin, I know skin starts with S. I just have to go in alphabetical order until I get to S, find skin, and then I can go to that page. So they're always going to be in ABC order. That's also a question on your yellow packet. So I will, if you need to pause, go ahead and pause. You're also going to find what page that concept is on. So going back to the frog skin, if I want to read about skin, I know that skin is talked about on page 14, 21, or 35. So you are also going to figure out the page where that concept can be found. So if you wanted to find information about spawn, on what page would you look? Spawn starts with S. So find S. Okay, there's S. Now I find spawn. What pages would spawn be talked about? Write that answer down. Sometimes you're going to see in numbers that there's a little dash in between those numbers, that dash is important. That tells you a piece of information that you need to know. So the dash means through. So you could find information about spawn on pages seven through nine. So that means page seven, page eight, and page nine are all going to talk about spawn because that little dash is in there, that means through. The comma, so you'll see the numbers have commas after them. When we have commas, we're usually listing things. So the comma means and. So you can find information about a frog's skin on page 14 and page 21 and page 35. So the dash means through and the comma means and. <clears throat> now we need to list all of the pages, all of the pages of this particular book that contains information about amphibians. You should write that down on your yellow packet. List all of the pages of this book that contain information about amphibians. If you can't see the board, look at your yellow packet because you have it off to the side and you could probably see it better on there. If you need to pause the video for time to write your answers down, please pause your video. Last thing we're going to talk about is the, or we've got two more. We're going to talk about glossary and guide words. So a glossary, sometimes you guys are actually familiar with glossaries and you probably didn't even know it yet, but 
The glossary is also located at the back of the book. You're gonna find that in the back of your book, not the beginning, not the middle. Again, you're gonna find it at the back of the book, just like you'd find it index at the back of your book. Some glossaries um, contain pronunciation. So pronunciation is telling you how to say that word. So this word right here, it's telling you how you're going to say that word. Um, what information can we find in a glossary? You're going to find your vocab words. That's where your vocab words are from your story. So in science, when I make you write your vocab words down, they're usually highlighted in yellow. Those words, if you flip to the back of your science book, they're gonna be listed in ABC order. So if you forget the definition of them, just flip to the glossary and you'll be able to look them up. So they are your vocab words that are related to your topic and they're always in ABC order. Hint, hint, that's a question. <laughs> and they're also going to give you the definition of that word. They're gonna tell you what that word means. Again, if you need to pause, go ahead and pause so you can write this down or fill in the blanks on your packet. So moving on, you, in your glossary that's on your packet, find the word amphibious. When you find amphibious, write down the definition. What does amphibious mean? What does the glossary on your yellow packet say amphibious means? Write that definition down Pause the video if you need time to write down. But I'm gonna keep moving. And your last question is, which glossary word describes an organism that needs oxygen to live? So here's where it gets a little tricky. They didn't give you the word. You have to find the word. So what you need to do is on your little glossary on the side of your paper, had to shut the timer off on the glossary on your paper read those definitions and find the one that says an organism that needs to live or that needs oxygen to live and write that vocab word down again pause the video if you need more time to think So before we move on, we're gonna talk about guide words. So especially if I make you use the really cool orange book that's in the back of the room, the dictionary. On the top, there's little words that are always in the corner. Those words are called guide words. And those words are very helpful when you're trying to find a word in the glossary or in the dictionary or even the index sometimes. So these are sometimes found on glossary pages and you will always 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 find them in the tops of or in dictionary pages so that would be like these right here so here's their glossary words that are listed with the definitions and then you've got the words up on top that's what they're talking about with guide words so guide words they're going to tell you the first word on that glossary page and the last word on the glossary page. So our first word, our first um, guide word that they gave us is the word food. So if we look, what's your very first vocab word on this guide or on this glossary page? It's gonna be food. <laughs> the last guide word is fruit. So if you look, what's your last guide word on your glossary page? It's fruit. So those guide words help tell you what the first word on the page is and what the last word on the page is. So these are super helpful when you need to look up a certain word. You have a word in mind, you're gonna to like quickly, so you're not sitting there reading every single word that's on the page. You can use your guide words to help you find that word even faster. So, <laughs> Since the reader knows the glossary is in alphabetical order, 
it allows him or her to um, determine whether a certain word is on the page that you're looking at. So let me show you what I mean. Pretend that this is just part of a glossary page. So I open up my science book or this book about frogs and I'm in the glossary and I'm only looking at a small part of the glossary page. Notice how I changed the second guide word. It's not fruit anymore, it's habitat. So the first word in my glossary is food and now my last word is habitat. So knowing that the first word on the page is food and this is only part of my page. My page keeps going down. I just don't have that on there. So the last word on my page is habitat. Would I be able to find the word egg on this page? So to do that, you gotta think, okay, egg starts with E. Does E come after F? A, B, C, D, E, F. So will I be able to find egg on this page? So we listed it again, we've got egg is the word we're looking for, food, which is our first word, and then habitat, which is our last word. So if we put those words in order, does E come between F and G, or F and H? It does not. So I would not be able to find the word egg on this page, um, since egg would come before the word food if I listed them in alphabetical order. Could I find the word grass on this page? So the same thing. We know the first word on our page is food and our last word is habitat, but the word we're looking for is grass. So I need to put the words grass, food, and habitat in alphabetical order. So we know that F comes first, so we go food, grass, habitat. Would I be able to find the word grass on this particular page of my glossary? Yes, I would. And I know that because G, the letter G, comes between F and H, F for food, H for habitat. So G comes be, or in between those. So yes, I know that grass is going to be on this glossary page. Your last one is heredity. Can I find that word on this page? So the same thing, you're going to take your first your first guide word and your last guide word, so food and habitat, and, and I'm going to take the word that I'm looking for, which is heredity, and I'm gonna put those words in alphabetical order. So we've got food, habitat, heredity. Am I going to be able to find heredity on this glossary page? I would not, because heredity, so that, yeah, they both start with an H, so it's kind of like when we're ordering numbers, look at your first place, they're both an H. Then I move to the next one and I've got an A and an E. Well, E comes after A, so that means that this word is gonna come after the word habitat. So I would not find this word on my glossary page. We're gonna stop there today for reading. So go ahead and um, Hand your yellow packets into the reading basket and we're going to move on to your next lesson.